So there's a lot of overlap between epilepsy and autism spectrum disorders. Right away, we know that the comorbidity is quite high, something like 30% or even 40% of individuals with autism spectrum disorder will also have epilepsy. And that doesn't even take into account some of the subclinical episodes that might be seizure-like or the epileptiform abnormalities that might be present on an EEG. The end result is that we see a lot of overlap. And there is something about pathophysiology, perhaps, that intersects. There are a lot of things that that we think physiologically might blend a little bit. If we understand some of the basics of autism spectrum, then we know that there is some kind of anomalous connectivity. And when the connections are anomalous, there are many potential sources of error or problems. And that's what we see in a lot of these neural networks. We see hyperexcitability. We see that these nerves are, are quick to fire, quick to trigger, maybe when we don't want them to. So the overlap with epilepsy is as much conceptual as it is practical. And we think a lot about using medicines like anticonvulsants or anti-seizure medicines, as is more accurately said today, in order to, to help us with this overlap and with this comorbidity because maybe we're treating the same underlying problem and an anti-seizure medicine might help reduce the hyperexcitability or take into account the anomalous connections between neurons that are leading an individual to be vulnerable to mood swings, impulsive symptoms, aggressive outbursts, spontaneous disruptions of behavior. All of those things can result from hyperexcitable neurons. So we think that the overlap conceptually will lead us to practical treatment options. There have been a few, but not very many real world studies looking at this comorbidity and looking at the overlap. It's a difficult business because epilepsy itself is heterogeneous. Autism spectrum is heterogeneous. The whole world of epileptic encephalopathies is also heterogeneous. So it's very difficult to do a a concentrated uniform sample when we try to compare treatment arms. Most of what we have are anecdotes or larger studies, observational, and and then just trying to pick targets and, and outcomes that are meaningful. So not so many studies, but a lot of anecdotal information. And we, we have some leads. We have some good insight from those smaller reviews or studies so that we can at least make a step forward.